I think a lot of people make the mistake in thinking that Aviate is actually all about making pilots' watches. And while their watches are definitely aviation-themed, I don't think pilots' watches is actually what they're going for. Rather than making a watch that would be worn by pilots, they're making watches that are really inspired and reminiscent and really evoke the feeling of actually being near these historical airplanes that they kind of model them after. So it's actually a really unique concept in watchmaking and kind of a cool theme for a micro brand to have. And I don't think I've ever quite taken them seriously enough um, in considering where they draw their design inspirations when I've reviewed their watches in the past. Today I'm going to be reviewing the AV8 P51 Mustang Blakesley Chronograph Edition watch. And not only am I going to review it as a watch, but also you know, as it's intended to be a commemorative piece of aviation history. Let's check it out. Hey everyone, welcome back to Just The Watch. My name's Dave, and as I mentioned in the intro, today we're gonna to be taking a look at a watch from Aviate, which has a very long name, which is also very typical of their watches. And this is a very cool looking watch, as a lot of their watches are. And what they so often do in a lot of their best pieces is really take elements of a certain airplane and try and transform that airplane into a watch that you can wear on your wrist. So they're really fun pieces to wear as well. They're super interesting to look at on your wrist and they have a lot of little details that really kind of, um, you know, get you going, especially if you're into aviation history. And I think particularly for aviation themed watches, the heritage and the history and the emotion behind the watch um, plays a larger part in why people want these watches um, than they would for say like dive watches or chronographs or that sort of thing. So there's gonna be kind of two sections to this video. In the first part, I'm going to try and take Aviate at their word and really look at um, the different elements of the aircraft that they designed this, this watch after and see how they brought it into the watch and see what kind of value I think that adds to it. And then in the second part, we'll see if that actually translates into a decent looking and working and functioning watch. So I'm going to review it first as a commemorative piece and second as a timekeeping instrument and kind of pull it together and see how this all works out. But before we jump into that, I do want to give a big thanks to Aviate for sending this piece in for review. It was given to me. I don't have to give it back after the review is done. So keep that in mind as we go through the review. I don't want to go too far without at least getting the dimensions and specifications out of the way. So let's at least get that done. Um, this watch is a 43 millimeter diameter chronograph watch. It has a Seiko Mecha Quartz chronograph inside of it. It has a domed mineral crystal, 22 millimeter lug openings, about 50 millimeters lug to lug, and 13 millimeters tall. It has 50 meters of water resistance and you have the option of getting it either on a custom leather strap or on a metal bracelet, which is the version that I have. The version that I'm reviewing costs $315 retail, um, but I do have a discount code down below that I believe will knock 15% off, getting you down to around $285. Also, sometimes you can find better discount codes too, depending on what's offering. So make sure you check Aviate's uh, like Facebook page and see if they're offering any promotional discounts on this before you use my code. Um, but if you do use my code, I will get a small commission. So full disclosure with that as well. Okay, so let's talk about the inspiration for this watch. And you get a lot of that in the name. It's a very long name. So this is the P-51 Mustang Blakesley Chronograph. So P-51 Mustang is the airplane that this is designed after. The P-51 Mustang is a very famous World War II era fighter plane that played a large role in the success of the Allies and defeating the uh, Axis forces. And so it's a pretty cool plane to, to kind of uh, commemorate and to make a watch out of. And then this is the Blakesley edition. Now this is something AVA typically does. They often name their watches after both an airplane and a person who had something to do with that airplane, uh, which is kind of a cool touch. As far as the name of the person that they're attaching to the watch, there's nothing really about Blakesley um, that has really anything to do with this watch itself. So we won't go too much into too much of his history. But in their literature, they say that the, uh, the watch is commemorating the incredible life of an American fighter ace and commander. Aviate's P-51 Mustang story continues with a wearable tribute to the exploits and achievements of Colonel Don Blakesley during World War II. And then they have more information about him and his history if you want to get into that. But what I really want to focus on is the P-51 Mustang part of it um, and look at the parts of the plane that they've sort of taken and incorporated into this watch. And in particular, they highlight eight elements of the P-51 Mustang airplane that they've tried to bring into the P-51 Mustang watch. So let's jump through those. Um, the first is in the case design. They're using a very sleek and kind of rounded case design and they say that that's supposed to be reminiscent of the streamlined design of the P-51 Mustang. 
And this case design is actually really cool. This is one of the things that most impressed me about the watch uh, was that it was a very interesting case design, very appealing, uh, very kind of retro feel with the sort of curved lines and the uh, polished sides of it. So really cool case design that they put in there. Um, definitely like that aspect of it. The, another thing that they've taken is the typography from the airplanes. Um, so they've used the lettering that's used on the, you know, to, on the identification numbers of the plane and they brought that onto the dial uh, to use as some of the cardinal hour markers so that you get that kind of retro World War II inspired um, typeface on the, uh, the numbers, which is kind of a cool look there. One of the cool things about doing a chronograph is that you now have subdials, and Aviate loves to take the subdials on their chronographs and bring in um, design inspirations from instrument panels on, on historical aircraft. I think that's one of the coolest things that they do. Their subdial design just looks really, uh, really amazing and really stunning, and this one is no uh, different. So they said they've taken a look at the, uh, the instrument panel from the P-51 Mustang, and they've tried to sort of incorporate some of those design elements when they design their subdials, and they look really great on the watch some of the, the coolest looking subdials you've seen. Um, so also another cool element of it. One element that I think is really unique to this watch that I haven't seen on any other Aviate designs is the crown guard that they put on it. So they've got this kind of crown guard that swoops around and it has these dots on it. And they say that's meant to, uh, to reflect the exhaust pipes coming out of the side of the airplane. So it kind of gives that little bit of a look to it. Um, this one is a little bit more of a controversial design choice, but it does look cool. And yeah, I can kind of see that inspiration coming out where it does sort of um, evoke the image of a P-51 Mustang with the exhaust pipes coming out of the side of it to have you know that crown guard with little dots on it coming out of the side of the watch as well. Another element modeled after the P-51 Mustang is the chronograph pushers that they put on here. They say this is meant to reflect the wing shape from the P-51 Mustang. And that's really cool. They're really nice custom pushers uh, in this shape. However, they are fairly stiff and I'll talk about that more in the second part of the review. On the face of the watch, there's this interesting little marking or almost like a plaque or label that comes around noting that this is a chronograph watch. And they say that that, as that element is taken from uh, the artificial horizon on the P-51 Mustang. This is uh, getting very uh, detailed into their thing there. I couldn't actually find any shots of, a, of the artificial horizon that had that marking on the internet, but apparently one of their designers saw it in some picture or stock photo or some way and decided, hey, that's kind of a cool little element. Let's put it on the watch face. Um, it doesn't really serve any purpose on the watch, but again, the whole point of this is to sort of evoke that feeling of being around the airplane, and I think it is effective in, yeah, at least kind of that element of it. And then they decided to go with a multi-layer dial where it's kind of divided into sections. This, they say, was inspired by the instrument panel on the, uh, the P-51 Mustang where, you know, it would have been divided into different sections and some parts would have been raised a little bit more than other. Um, that I can see, but overall it has, it's actually just a really cool looking dial. I like the different layers on it and sort of asymmetry to it. Um, yeah, it does, again, sort of make you feel like you're sitting in front of a cockpit and looking at the instrument panel of a cockpit when you check the time on your watch. And then for the handset, they've taken inspiration from the altimeter on the, uh, the instrument panel from the P-51 Mustang. This is something they do in a lot of their watches. A lot of their handsets are very reminiscent of airplane altimeters and a lot of their, and even their 12 hour layouts oftentimes are, are meant to mimic uh, an altimeter. And this is really effective too. They're, they're, it's a really nice handset that they put on here. Um, definitely like it. And the counterbalances on it, I think really play into that feeling of it being like an instrument panel or like an instrument gauge. Um, so yeah, so you see that as well. So those are all the elements of the P-51 Mustang that they've taken and crammed into this watch. And again, from a sort of emotional standpoint and a visual standpoint, it's very appealing and very effective. Uh, if you are interested in the P-51 Mustang or just aircraft from this period, you're definitely going to get that feel of that by having it on your wrist. And again, I think that's a really important part of this watch. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, then this is something that will probably have a high level of appeal to you. But let's move on to the second question. Is this a good watch? And that's where things kind of get a little bit tricky because a lot of these visual elements that are so cool might have a little bit of a negative impact on the actual functionality of the watch. So let's go ahead and get behind the table and take a closer look at that and evaluate this from a watch standpoint. All right, let's talk about this as an actual watch now and see what we got. Now I want to start again by going back to the case because again, I think this is actually one of the coolest case designs I've seen coming out of Aviate. It's very simple and yet uh, it just has a really stunning look to it. You're getting a very high polished side and the side is very curved. It's this almost kind of bulbous uh, side of it. So you've got this really curved streamlined look to the case. Uh, that comes down almost to a point at the lugs 
and then the bracelet completely matches it. So you notice that on the top of the lugs you've got this great brushing uh, and then on the sides it's high polished. The bracelet mimics that. So the top of the bracelet is uh, brushed but then on the sides you've got a high polish that completely matches the side of the case. So just a really seamless transition there. Um, also you'll see that the case comes down into a pretty uh, steep point here you know at the lugs you're getting 22 millimeters at lugs and then the bracelet again follows that that same line where it you know tapers from 22 at the lugs all the way down to 18 so you get a really steep taper on the bracelet as well and i think that just really matches the shape of the case perfectly they did a really great job of blending the bracelet to the case now one thing that i'm not as happy about with the bracelet is that it is a bit rattly So I think that the links are a little bit on the loose side there, uh, which is unfortunate because the links are very high quality. They're solid links, really nicely finished. And the clasp also is a pretty good clasp. You're getting a very nice milled clasp there. Uh, so everything should be you know, in order there, but for whatever reason, it's just a little bit on the rattly side. You can also see you get solid uh, end links in there and then a really nice and a really nice engraving on the back of it too. As you can see the P-51 Mustang on the back, which is a cool touch for a watch that is so heavily inspired by the aircraft. Um, it's nice to actually have the aircraft uh, on hand at all times. Now this is a chronograph watch. It's got a Seiko Mecha Quartz chronograph inside, which means that you have a hybrid uh, quartz and mechanical movement. The chronograph part of the watch is mechanical, um, but the main timekeeping is battery powered quartz. So the chronograph hand is driven by the battery, but it's driven through a mechanical process, uh, which gives you uh, kind of a tactile feel on these. It feels like a mechanical chronograph when you use the pushers. You get a smooth sweep, and then when you do reset it, you get the mechanical kind of snap back for the, uh, the hands, which is really cool there. One of the things that people tend to love about Mecha Quartz chronographs compared to normal quartz chronographs is the way the pushers feel. Uh, there's a kind of a more mechanical uh, tactile feel to it. You can feel the clicking and the gears engaging when you do that. However, on this one, the pushers are extremely stiff to the point that when it's on the wrist, it's actually fairly difficult to use uh, for starting, stopping, and resetting. It's the kind of thing I hope it will loosen up within time, but you know, as it is now when it's this stiff, it's fairly difficult to use, and that's one of the big negatives I've had with this particular one. On the positive side, though, the chronograph hand is very well aligned. And the chronograph markings are very detailed as well. You can see for the 60-minute subdial here that it is uh, indexed minute by minute, so you can read it down to the minute. The chapter ring is divided up into fifths of a second, which will allow you to read the chronograph down to a fifth of a second. And then this one, they've uh, put tachymeter etchings along the bezel, which turned out really well on this one as well. So you have a functional tachymeter as well. But, and here we go again, back to those design choices that they made. You'll notice that the uh, counterbalances on the hands, while they look cool, um, they're so big, they often will get in the way of the chronograph uh, subdials. So the subdials are often going to be covered, if not by the main hour hand or by the uh, minute hand, they're going to be covered by the counterbalances. So you can see those counterbalances um, add another thing that can get in the way of those chronograph subdials, kind of limiting a bit of the functionality. Which is unfortunate because the hands are one of the coolest things about this watch. Um, I really love the hand design. I think it has that sort of aviation look where they're trying to go after the, you know, they said they're mimicking it after the altimeter uh, dials on the aircraft. Um, but the minute hand in particular is just this really nice long minute hand, especially on a watch this size, just looks so cool with it stretching all the way to the edge there. And then that really broad sword hour hand, also highly legible, that orange chronograph second hand. You know, the hand design is really, really well done. Uh, and the counterbalances look cool, but again, you know, this being a chronograph, you know, functionally it kind of is, is hurt a little bit by those counterbalances. Um, but other than that, I think the hand design is really uh, cool. And we talked about the crown guard before as being a nice aesthetic choice, but it's really not necessary on this watch. You don't really need a crown guard, and it does make uh, accessing the crown a lot more difficult. You kind of got to get in there, and for adjusting the time and stuff, it's a little bit harder to get to. Um, so this is more of a decorative choice than a functional choice, and it's one that does hurt the function a bit. Another thing is that this does have a mineral crystal, uh, which mineral crystal tends to be a little bit clearer than sapphire. You don't get as much reflections, uh, which is cool. 
it's nice, it's got a nice dome to it, and it gives you a really clear view into the dial, which is great. Um, but I always prefer Sapphire, and especially when you're up in this price range at around $300 for a Mecha Quartz Chronograph, um, oftentimes you will get Sapphire Crystals. Oftentimes you will get Sapphire Crystals from Aviate on some of their other models. Um, this one, I think the cost is, you know, a lot of it's gone into that highly detailed dial. I'm, I'm sure that must have cost them a little bit extra to produce that, and so probably um, that played into the decision to save cost on the crystal and go with a mineral instead of a sapphire. So overall, as a watch, it's not bad. You know, you, you get a pretty high degree of functionality. Everything works, but then there are a lot of those design elements that do kind of hinder the watch functionality, so there are some trade-offs there. We'll take a quick look at the Loom. There's nothing particularly spectacular about this one, so we're not gonna do a full Loom test, but the Loom is good. It looks really cool after dark. Um, even in daylight, you know, walking from a brightly lit room into a dimly lit one, you get a pretty strong glow, and it's very functional as well. So I think they did a good job with the Loom, but it's nothing particularly impressive. It kind of holds its own with a lot of other pilots' watches, and I definitely appreciate that aspect of the watch too. So let's try and sum up everything we got going on with this watch and talk about whether or not this is actually a good value for the money that you're getting. I think the design is definitely one of the strongest points of this watch. It's a very unique design, um, very cool, especially if you're into aviation history, and really well done. The dial is incredibly intricate and really does sell the idea of you, know, you sitting in, in an airplane cockpit uh, when you check the time on your wrist. So it's a really fun watch to wear from that perspective. On the negative sides of this watch, I think for me the biggest one is those pushers and their stiffness. Um, you know, if you want to really use this as a chronograph watch, you want to have easy access to those pushers. Um, but I found myself having to use more force than I wanted to every time, which just made it difficult and a little bit unpleasant to use. And normally with a Mecha Quartz chronograph, the feeling of the pushers and the tactile response to them is one of the strong points. So having that added stiffness here was a bit of a disappointment. But overall, I think this is one of Aviate's coolest designs to date incredibly intricate, incredibly detailed, and yeah, a lot of fun for people who have an interest in aviation and aviation history. You're gonna take some hits because of that design and those added elements are going to obstruct some of the chronograph functions and its you know, functionality as an actual watch, um, but everything is still fully functional, well laid out, and it does work. Uh, yeah, you just gotta kinda put up with some of those flourishes that are on there um, for the design aspect of it. All that said, I always love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you think of this particular watch and of Aviate's entire kind of model of, you know, drawing this inspiration from aviation history and bringing these elements of aircraft uh, design and features into their watch designs as well. Is that something that strikes you as really cool and desirable or is it more of just kind of a gimmicky thing that doesn't really do it for you? Um, I think for a lot of people, the answer is going to depend on how much they really are into aviation history. Um, and how much they love airplanes, because I think if you're kind of a plane geek, this kind of thing is really going to appeal to you. If you're not so much and you're more of a you know, pure watch geek, you, you might not find as much to like in the, uh, the Aviate designs. Uh, yeah, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, again, always love hearing from you. That's gonna wrap it up for today. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.